Ugh, your stupid slow-charging EVs will never beat the speed and convenience of my gas station. That's because gas pumps and gas cars have existed for over a hundred years. You've had plenty of time to build up the infrastructure for it. If electric cars have that much time to develop DC fast charging, I'm sure they could beat the gas pump. No, you're always going to be limited by battery packs overheating and their cables and how much energy you can physically fit into a wire that's small enough to fit in a car. But you can't just factor in total energy move, you have to factor and how much energy is actually used by the vehicle. Why are either of you talking about how fast a horse can put hay in its belly? Dude. I tell you what, the settlers had it right from the beginning. Those horses could eat hay and they'd run thousands of miles across the country without stopping at any pump or charge station. What? I take your silence as evidence of me being right. Are you an idiot? So the quick answer is simply no, if you don't have time to stick around for the rest of the video. But the long answer is, it's complicated, because there's different measurements of actual refueling time versus refueling efficiency and energy transfer. And well, I don't like talking about gas vehicles, because I'm all into this electric vehicle future, and I can't wait to see what other electric vehicles make it to market in the next couple years. And I love how quickly electric vehicles have become commonplace, thanks to companies like Tesla. But I do got to admit that gasoline as a liquid source is a very, very incredibly energy dense chemistry because you can actually translate and figure out exactly in the form of kilowatt hours like we have for electric vehicles how much energy is in one gallon of gas. Thankfully, other scientists and engineers have done this for us so I don't have to figure it out but basically one gallon of gas translates to about 33.7 kilowatt hours which means you can hold like over 30 kilowatt hours just in the palm of your hand essentially which you can't really do that with battery packs because batteries even the real real dense ones are nowhere near that amount of energy density the problem with gasoline is that we can't necessarily extract that energy out of it without there being tons of losses due to heat and usually it's through a combustion engine which means you got to move cylinders and pistons up and down and all of those extra motions to move all of the various parts in the engine there's losses with all of that energy so yes that means that within even just 10 gallons of gasoline in a gas vehicle Vehicle, you have over 300 kilowatt hours worth of energy more energy than what's even in the Hummer EVs battery pack But again, you don't get all of that energy out of the gas tank because of all these losses at the tailpipe and all the noise that you hear That's another loss and all of those moving parts There's all losses of energy along the way so doing some quick napkin math here I wanted to experiment with this because it's a subject that I see come up in my personal life a lot of the time when people ask about how long does it take to charge an EV and if we were to provide some of the same terminology that we provide to our EVs, like most Teslas peak out at a charging speed of around 250 kilowatts, which translates to a thousand miles an hour, right? Which sounds fast, but the inherent limitation, of course, of battery packs is the vast majority of vehicle grade batteries all have to taper off as their state of charge gets higher. The way Elon kind of described it, which I thought was kind of fun, was think of electrons being dumped into a battery pack as a bunch of cars filling up a parking lot. You you know, when the parking lot is empty, there's lots of parking spaces everybody can choose from. But once that parking lot is at like 60 or 70% capacity, now it takes a bit longer for all those cars to find a free space. We've all been to Costco, right? You know that concept. So if we were to give a peak charge speed, just like Teslas have 250 kilowatts, to a gas vehicle, you would have to translate to how much electricity are we dumping into the gas tank at any given moment. And it feels kind of silly to reference it by the hour per se like Tesla does when they say a thousand miles per hour because pretty much no one at the gas pump is usually there for longer than five minutes. Maybe if you go inside, stretch it to 10. And if you're really in a rush and you have a small gas tank, you could probably do it in under five minutes. So that's an inherent advantage of the gas tank versus the battery pack is you can dump at the same speed all the way up until the gas tank is full, whereas the battery pack is always going to charge much faster at those low states of charge and then taper off as the battery pack gets higher. But providing that peak speed to a gas tank, knowing that you can probably roughly pump about, on average, let's say 15 gallons of gasoline into a vehicle within the span of five minutes, and you assume that one gallon of gasoline is about 33 kilowatt hours, you extrapolate that out to an hour, it's essentially like six megawatts. It's kind of an insane amount of energy you're transferring every time you're at the gas pump. And trust me when I tell you when it comes to electric vehicle development right now, no one is anywhere close to figuring out six megawatts. I mean, right now, 
now the Tesla Semi has a custom charge port that theoretically can go higher than one megawatt, but as of right now, the mega chargers they have installed for Modesto on those vehicles, which keep in mind are an entire semi truck, not something that everyday person would buy and use. Those are capping out at 750 kilowatts. And for the EV space, that's still very rare and practically unheard of for consumer grade vehicles. But there's other charge connectors like MCS, which stands for the megawatt charging system that is basically designed to handle up to like three or 3.5 megawatts. An insane amount of electricity being transferred all at once, but still not even like half of what a traditional sedan is getting at your average everyday gas pump. So that's why I would say the short answer is no in terms of just energy transferred from point to point. We have many, many decades of development to go before six megawatts would even be remotely commonplace. And personally, I'm going to stand out on a limb here and say, I don't think in our lifetimes we're ever going to reach a point where everyday vehicles are charging at six megawatts because because frankly, electric vehicles are so much more efficient and have so much smaller battery packs and there's so much less losses when pumping that energy into the powertrain, you don't really need six megawatts. So I'll explain what I mean by that. In my view, talking about energy transferred is kind of the wrong metric we should be comparing. Because of course, on one hand, we could say, yeah, gas vehicle putting fuel into it at like six megawatts roughly translates to like over 5,000 miles an hour. But again, you're not at the gas pump for over an hour and most gas vehicles vehicles cap out with a range around 400 and 450 miles. So even though you're moving a lot of energy, you're wasting a ton of that energy based on the form factor you're storing it in. With electric vehicles, we get to keep a lot of that energy because there's less losses and electric powertrains just inherently have less moving parts. You know, there's no emissions and there's no noise for all of that energy to be lost to with all of the complications of a transmission. So I want to look more towards the miles added back per hour or miles back per minute, if you will, so that that we can actually translate, okay, how long am I stopped at either a gas pump or a charging station and how much range do I get based on every minute that I'm there? That to me is a more fair comparison because of the energy form factor, one being inherently inefficient and one being super efficient. So like I mentioned earlier, if we're talking about the per hour space, which I'm still going to use for gas vehicles just because that's what we use for electric vehicles a lot of the time, gas cars surpass 5,000 miles per hour rate in when it comes to range per minute added, which is still very impressive. The fact that you can basically get on average like 450 miles of range after stopping for five minutes. We're not seeing anywhere close to that with electric vehicles right now, but we're talking hypothetical, theoretically down the road, what could be enabled. And right now, a Tesla Model 3 or Model Y is the most common electric vehicle. Those can hit about 1,000 miles an hour. So about one fifth of what the gas vehicle is able to obtain. And on the higher end of vehicles, you can find cars that are super efficient but also support really fast DC fast charging. A good example of this would be like the Lucid Air. It has a higher voltage architecture and assuming you're able to find an Electrify America station that is operational giving you its peak speed and you find a stall that supports the 350 kilowatt fast charging, that's where you could get a Lucid Air to about 350 kilowatts and thanks to its super efficient powertrain that translates to a little over 1200 miles an hour. So even on the high end, like even if you're willing to drop $100,000 on a sedan, you're still not even really at the one quarter speed of what a gas tank could do. So the limiting factor here, as you may notice, not only comes down to how fast can the charging station output power, but also how efficient is the vehicle itself. That's how you're really going to get the most amount of range out of a car within the shortest amount of time is making sure that it makes the most amount of use of that electricity added back to the battery pack, which is where a new vehicle that you may have noticed behind me starts to enter the picture. If we start to see the more common wide adoption of hyper-efficient electric vehicles like the Aptera, for example, which has a huge emphasis on aerodynamics, so much so that they cover it in solar panels so it can charge itself. But of course, that's not going to be at very fast speeds. That's just supplemental charging to get you through the day. When you're on a road trip, however, that's where I think things for the Aptera start to get a bit more interesting because they have less rolling resistance, thanks to the three tires, and less weight to move because of its composite body and smaller battery pack, which just means the Aptera in general is lighter than pretty much any other four-wheel electric vehicle that it would be compared to. And that's why the Aptera is targeting 100 watt hours per mile. Or another way of saying that is for every one kilowatt hour in the Aptera, you get 10 miles of range. So a good comparison of how hyper-efficient the Aptera is versus your traditional gas vehicle is that assuming the Aptera hits its targeted specs, which 
the CEO assured me that it could even do better than that with certain trims. With a 33 kilowatt hour battery pack, you would get 330 miles of range out of the Aptera. And that's not a random figure I'm pulling out of my head because that's the same amount of energy within one gallon of gas. So that's right. The Aptera can go over 300 miles on the amount of energy in one gallon of gasoline. So that gives you some perspective on how incredibly efficient this vehicle is. And in my most recent interview with Chris Anthony, the CEO, he detailed how with the larger battery pack versions of the Aptera, they were hoping to hit faster DC charging speeds. And there's a lot of aspirational things here, but again, that's why this video is talking about the long distance future, not what's available today, but what's going to be available tomorrow. And the number that I didn't bring up, okay, this is all him. He said we would love to at some point get to the area where the 1,000 mile range Aptera, which has a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, the amount of energy found within about three and a half gallons of gas. He said they would love that to charge at like 300 kilowatts. So if you could pump 300 kilowatts into the Aptera, which can get 10 miles of range for every kilowatt hour, that would roughly translate to about 3,000 miles an hour of charge speed. So sure, still not quite the amazing 5,000 miles per hour that a gas car can get. Keep in mind that total range figure at the end of the day. Most gas vehicles have a range between 400, some go a little over 500 miles, there are occasionally some hybrids that you can get to 600, 700 miles, but the Aptera with that 100 kilowatt hour battery pack is targeting like a 1000 mile range, then that means it could sustain that 300 kilowatt charge speed over the span of say five minutes, maybe 10. And that's where I think you could actually start to rival the speed of stopping at a gas station. Even though it's not transferring the same amount of energy, I hope we've cleared the air on that one. That's probably never going to be financially viable on EV because you need a huge battery pack to accommodate for that much energy, not to mention different charge ports, different charging equipment. The most common charge port in North America right now is NAX, and that caps out, according to Tesla, at one megawatt. So I don't think we're going to get six megawatts anytime soon or probably even in our lifetime, but with more efficient vehicles, with higher voltage architectures and more aerodynamic emphasis like the Aptera, that's when, if you're able to hit that 3,000 miles an hour just for five to 10 minutes, if you do some of the math on that, it would translate to roughly 300 miles of range added back in five minutes. And then within 10 minutes, you would be hitting that 500 mile mark, which gas vehicles typically fill up and they're done at that point. So what I'm trying to say is if you have a huge emphasis on efficiency, whether that's through aerodynamics or hopefully through Tesla's new 1000 volt architecture on the Cybertruck and likely their third generation vehicle will be using 48 volt electronics, which helps with efficiency, but also the 1000 volt architecture architecture means that it's easier and cheaper to dump tons of current into that battery pack. That's where you could start to see a charge station stop, which only needs to take five to 10 minutes, but you're still getting 300 to 500 miles of range added back within that stop. So that's basically my long way of saying that with the right engineering, you can actually start to rival the same amount of miles added back into the battery as quickly as miles added back into the gas tank. And it's Aptera's next generation thing and higher voltage architecture with reliable charging networks that's going to get us to that point. I don't think the solution is going to just be mass deployment of four megawatt charging stations or having to redesign the charge connector again to try to match that of a gas pump. No, the solution is taking advantage of the technology that's currently in use, which involves better efficiency, whether that's towards exterior design or towards the interior voltage architecture. But unfortunately, a lot of that equation is going to ultimately come down to can the company build battery packs at that scale and make them affordable? And can they also build out the charging network to support it? Which is why I think Tesla probably has a better chance of hitting those speeds with their higher voltage architecture on the Cybertruck or the third generation vehicle. And Tesla will have the supercharger network to then support it in the long term. Whereas Aptera can take advantage of the existing charging networks and still get, you know, 2,500 or 3,000 miles added back per hour. And then your stops on road trips with the Aptera Terra won't be really that much different from stopping at a gas pump and you'll get about the same amount of range back as you do at a pump. Of course the numbers are all going to be different depending on which types of vehicles it is like a Hummer EV versus a gas Hummer is going to be a totally different story but I was just going for the rough averages for the sake of this video but what do you guys think? Are you in favor of fast charging being as fast as a gas station stop or do you kind of enjoy having a more leisure trip where you have 15 to 30 minutes to kind of stretch your legs, use the restroom get some food and then can 
continue on your journey. Feel free to let me know what you prefer or what you think will happen down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.